got inducted in, was part of an award that was presented to a promoter of the year, a man who'd done so much for over the last 30 odd years in Newark. Newark became the center capital of having the very best festival in Europe ever. And it was Bev Jackson who went in with her husband, Chris. Chris is in the back, hi Chris. And of course, a lady, if you're from this area and you would know it all, Southern Country Magazine has been around for a long, long time. One lady held it all together. The great Sue McCarthy. Sue, just before she died, was inducted into the Hall of Fame and she said it was one of her proud moments as acknowledgement of what she's done. Now we've changed that. We're going to induct a fourth person in. And the list will now include four, with the inclusion of a young lady that was born in Natil in Wales. I don't know where she is. I will call her in the English way, which is Iona Boggy. If you're Welsh, it's Yona. Yona, will you join me on stage? that brought her to the knowledge of just about everybody there. By the time she got to Bangor University, where she made soda wild oats as a student, she picked up to how to play the guitar. She was going around doing songs everywhere. And like all good Welsh girls, she met a stranger in the village who was studying French at the Bangor University. And it was a Scotsman, which must have sounded very good. Him speaking to her in Welsh with a French accent was a Scot. This was the late 70s, and then she went on to become a primary school teacher. But they started gigging around and they started playing country music in just about all the clubs all around Wales, and suddenly their name and fame spread. And they took over the whole of like the middle area of Britain. And everybody knew Iona and Andy, or as some of the people still on the border said, Yona and Andy, whichever way it is, it's the same young lady. She did very, very well. And it was her ability to translate American country music, folk music, country music, whatever it is, whatever you like to call it, into Welsh and get the glorious bit. The clip you heard up there was Charlie Lansbury's What Colour Is The Wind? A great fancy piece that's been played for a, a long, long time. It's one of the great features of her show. They travel around, they did somewhere around about 35,000 miles a year traveling around in a motorhome, uh, just traveling to one gig to another. They built up tremendous rapport and it was her ability to do Welsh that attracted her to SC, S4C, the Welsh speaking television program down there, where she has become since the adopted authority on country music. Anything to do with country music, they ring Iona up and ask her what's happening next, how it goes. She regularly presents shows on there. They did a live story on there with a story up through the valleys. Got the highest listening figures they'd had, or viewing figures for a long, long time. That was very good. She then got on to Sean Records, and while they were on Sean, they produced album after album of both Welsh music and Welsh country music, all of which sold in great numbers to all the tourists that go to Wales, including Alvin going down to see his in-laws down in Swansea. <laughs> For 15 years, at the Cymru Theatre in Llandudno, under the Great Orm, they had one of the very best of all the theatre-produced festivals. They had all the big American stars there. Peter Rowan played there. 
they went for Michael Ronstadt, Linda Ronstadt's brother. She met up with him again in Tombstone when she was touring America because they take tours all over America, all over the world actually, went down to New Zealand. And while they were there, she sang at the Grand Ole Opry. She sang in Welsh on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry. And then she went down to the stage that launched Garth Brooks, the Bluebird Cafe, and sang at the famed Bluebird Cafe. Ladies and gentlemen, a worthy inductee into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Please welcome Iona Boggy! BCMA on a superb professional show tonight. Absolutely brilliant. I can't believe I'm standing where I've been started. Yeah. And now I know your wife is well, is she? Oh, brilliant. We'll have a natter after, you know. Adopted Jack. All right. Whatever that means. South Wales difference. But anyway, Jim, BCMA, absolutely, I am so shocked, honoured, all those wonderful um, words that comes to mind, it's just mind-boggling. So thank you so much for this great, great honour. We won the um, award for a duo, Andy and myself, in the early 80s, so that's a long time ago, so I haven't won anything on my own before besides a raffle somewhere. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we haven't travelled over the board as much because of the price of petrol and accommodation and what have you, you know. So, um, but we've been recording, as you heard, with side records. We recorded five albums in the Welsh language. We are um, on Welsh radio. We are very, very lucky in Wales that Radio Cymru, Welsh radio, play country music all day long with other kinds of music, which is a real bonus for us. I appeared on Welsh television last year singing a Welsh duet with the world famous guitarist Albert Lee. So Welsh telly is like that. And then as you heard, I sang with Michael Ronstadt and Linda Ronstadt was my heroine. Emmy Lou Harris was my heroine also and Albert Lee played in her band. But also, Gail Davies is a big, big friend of mine now. I grew up buying her LPs. And magic things happen in country music. That doesn't happen in any other form of music, I don't think. We can make it happen. And it does sometimes, you know. Um, as I sang on the Grand Ole Opry in Welsh, it was fantastic. But there are a few British actors I'd like to thank, and that's Bob McKinley and the late Ben Rees. In the early 80s, they came yeah, to North Wales Country Music Club in Colwyn Bay and they told us to turn professional and we did. And I and Andy joined Tony Mess Country Music Road Show where we travelled from north of Scotland down to the south of England. I was never home and we travelled 35,000 miles, Andy, myself and a little dog called Crisp, little Jack Russell. She was more famous than us actually. Uh, so we could never have done any of that without you, the British fans, who have all now become friends. We've been doing this over 30 years and we've got fantastic friends, so we thank you all very, very much. And the club organisers are fantastic at greeting country music acts because we're all very, very tired arriving. There's a cup of tea on, there's a smile and a welcome, and that means a lot to an artist, I can assure you. So, so, I can't do this job without my husband. And I knew I'd cry, because country music is an emotional music, and I could never have done this without Andy, my wonderful husband. <laughs> and also to my mum and dad for buying me my first ever guitar, because they could never afford it, and I know that they really saved a lot of money for that wonderful, wonderful Spanish guitar I've still got today and the Bert Whedon songbook play in a day. So thank you, Mam and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> 